So the power here, whoops, oh. So uh, I guess, uh, did we already have a formula for that? Yeah. Yeah, what was our formula? It was, uh, oh yeah, we can just plug in for d over there, 200 over pi d squared. So yeah, for all we know, it actually could be the same distance. Yeah, so this would just be our 200 over pi d squared. We already got this formula in the previous part. So yeah, you're absolutely right. You could just say d is 3.5 meters. But now we're not focusing on any particular area on that surface anymore. So we could call that, uh, let's just call it 5.2. What would be the units on that? Um, the power is watts over meters. Yeah, this is an intensity, so it's 5.2 watts per meter squared. Good. And then, um, then we can get it back to up there. Right. Incidentally, notice that the problem specifically said this is average power. They said there was an average power output of 800. That tells us that this is an average intensity, which is exactly what we want to plug into this formula over here. So we have to pay close attention to when they're calling things averages and when they're calling the maximums to make sure we're using the right formulas. And then Three times ten to the positive eight, because it's a very big number. It's the speed of light. C is three times ten to the eighth. mu zero is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 is the exact value. So we might as well use the exact value of 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 for mu zero. Two? This two down here? Oh, no, that's what I didn't do. Okay. Yeah, I guess the two got dropped out down here. Okay. I think you might have to, uh, the answer should be bigger than before, not smaller. Right, so. yeah, I haven't done that. Oh, I'm sorry. That looks good. Let's just call that 3921. We're just rounding off to what feels. 
good. And do you remember what the units are for electric fields? Oh, very good. Yeah, that's good. All right, so yeah, electric field, 62.6 uh, uh, newtons per coulomb. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Um, you can use the average intensity of the This one over here? Yeah. That's right. Or, maybe simpler, you could say intensity just equals this. Yeah. Okay. Or even simpler though, once we know E, we should be very um, easy to find C. What's the relationship between E and V? Um, it's E equals C. That's right. And this always works for either average or peak, as long as if you put in the average E, you'll get the average V. Or if you put in the peak E, you'll get the peak V. So here we have the peak E, so we can put that in to get the peak V. That'll give us a lot less chance to make the calculation mistake here. So then we can just use for the electric field divided by the speed of light. Right. I got a very good That's fine. So you got... So 2.09 times 10 to the negative 7. Yeah, let's call that 2.1. 2.1 times 10 to the negative 7. So that gives you the magnetic field. Good. And the units for that would be? Uh, Tesla. Ah, all right. Tesla would be pleased. I remember his name. OK, good. So that would give us our peak magnetic field. OK. All right. So uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's so much that we're covering. There's still stuff we haven't gone over in the past session. So anyway, even in that whole big, huge flow chart we did before, we haven't put in these formulas. So these are also good formulas to have. Again, these are kind of redundant because some of them can be proved by the other from the other ones. But it's easiest just to have all the different cases in one place in your uh, cheat sheets. You might as well just write these all out. You have to be very careful to notice which of these are in terms of the peaks and which are in terms of the averages. So the bars and the, and the p's are very important because you can see this problem is going back and forth between uh, the peak and the average over here. Here's an equation we already put in the uh, flow chart last time. So this was a useful equation here um, as, uh, as well. So, um, but in order to use these, first you have to know the intensity. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, how do you find the intensity at any distance from a source? Well, the way to find the intensity at a distance from the source is you take the power of the source and you ask, what area has it been spread over? What uh, area has the power been spread over? And for a point source, you remember that the area is a sphere. So we would use 4 pi r squared, or we just use our formula from the last step uh, over here. Since the point source is by far the most common, a lot of the time, people just write the formula like this. That's the formula that he gave in the cheat sheet uh, for this exam. And that gave us this formula in uh, part A. And then once we know the intensity, we can find either averages or peaks using uh, all this junk over here. OK, so you might want to go back and update that flowchart to put in uh, these formulas here, although then it's starting to get uh, pretty snarled. Okay.